I think he's a better person than he is player, and that's hard to say. I'm honored to present my friend and teammate, LaDainian Thomason, for enshrinement into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I am deeply honored to present my dear friend, Terrell Davis, for enshrinement into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. See, so that looks pretty good. Well, after the drama, the relocations, and the shunning of an entire community, I don't blame anyone for asking why today matters. But then you look up, and you see a man who honored his community by overcoming a migraine to win the biggest game in his own backyard. And next to him, you see a man that the world knows for 31 touchdowns in a single season. But we here know for feeding more than 2,100 families during the holidays. And that's when you realize that no owner and no moving trucks can move you from enjoying Terrell Davis and LaDainian Tomlinson earning football immortality. I spent nine years with the San Diego Chargers. <laughs> Head coach Marty Schottenheimer was the best coach I ever had. And we won five division titles. Dean, your family gave me my first opportunity in the NFL. And now as your special assistant, my most recent. I was honored to play alongside many outstanding players. Like the late Junior Seah. <laughs> Drew Brees. Rodney Harrison. With all my Charger teammates, please stand. <laughs> Love you guys. I went into a tailspin. I quit playing football, I was failing school, I was clearly a child in crisis. My daily ritual was hanging out with friends and getting into trouble. But this all came to a screeching halt late one night when I was 14. I found myself literally staring down the barrel of a shotgun. That night I determined that I would walk away from the irresponsible life I'd been living forever. I transferred to Lincoln High School. I worked to get better grades. I joined the football team. Lincoln provided me the fresh start that I needed. Well, now to give me that carrot, here's the stick. The L.A. Chargers playing inside their new soccer home for the first time in a joint practice with the L.A. Rams. Now, is it a coincidence that the franchises of Kurt Warner and LT didn't want the focus to be on players from their old places of playing? I don't know, but let's hear from the guy allowed to go to Canton and the guy that was not. There's a lot of values and, and things that I put in perspective of what he means to me and what he's always meant to the Chargers organization. And uh, I tried to weigh the pros and cons. And I, I, at that point, I just felt like uh, I couldn't figure out a reason not to be here. I'm standing right here in the end zone where you broke the touchdown record, December 2006. I just want to say congratulations on being inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame and how thankful I am and what an honor it was to be a teammate of yours. Back on our shores, USD football has returned to the field for the start of their fall camp. The Toreros now getting to deal with what every successful team gets to deal with, expectations. It comes when you win your first FCS playoff game, you return 12 starters, and your quarterback is a silver pigskin finalist. I think what we're really going to be able to do is build off of last season. So last season is obviously the best year in school history. And what I think is going to set up this season for success is a lot of the guys who had playing time, significant roles in last year's team, are going to need to get the rest of the team up to speed and make sure that that continues. Our upperclassmen have all tasted championships. They know that that's a, a tough road to go and get, and we have to go through a lot of tough opponents. And we've got some young, promising freshmen. We hope that we find a half a dozen more who can help us win some games this year. Of course, what you know is best for is prep football. And to get you ready for the first episode of the PPR on August 25th, do not forget to stop by our website at ksi.com PPR. There you will find dozens of exclusive prep previews for football teams all across the county, with more and more being added by the day. 
for Tory Pines football, August isn't just about training. It's about fundraising as well, especially when you can find an auctioneer just as good as this guy. My boss, Paul Rudy, putting the chance of a lifetime on that auction block. A spot at being a pigskin idol. Sources telling me it went for more cash than a ride on a Miramar jet simulator. Is the family going to be, be able to eat after this? <laughs> no, are you kidding me? But it's worth it. It's worth it for the kids and worth it for the show. Yeah, our kids will be uh, collecting cans simultaneously. <laughs> we, as well as many other high schools, have gone to hawk tackling, head behind tackling. We saw a huge drop in concussion rates in our program last year, and it was our third year of hawk tackling. You know, we feel like as a football community, we're on the right path. We're doing our best to protect kids and make our great game greater. Well, earlier we showed you Terrell Davis, one of the faces on Lincoln High's Mount Rushmore, and in time we might be adding this guy to that list, Norman Powell, the Toronto Raptors star hosting his second annual free youth camp at his old Hornet gym. Now, Powell and his high school crew christening this building back in 2010 when they brought home a state championship, and now he's telling these children that no matter the obstacles in front of them, they can make the same magic happen that he did. Sports in general, not only basketball, but sports around the world is getting really competitive. So, I mean, I think it's a, a good thing for kids to be able to come out and get free teaching from some of the coaches that have taught me uh, when I was their age uh, growing up um, how to go about playing basketball, a little fundamental skills that they can take not only from here, but can do on their own, you know, to help uh, develop their game. So it's really big at this age to try to get that extra edge um, on your competition. The best of the middle school best playing in the Indy Hoops World Championships at Point Loma Nazarene. An eighth grade showcase just for naming the best under 14 team in North America. And part of that event, it's the dunk contest, including celebrity judges like Tayshawn Cherry of the Saints and most likely our final look at Miles Norris. The future Oregon Duck is transferring out of Helix, is on his way to New Hampshire. Just saying thank you for all the support. It's been fun. My three years of high school here um, in San Diego. Um, I'll be back, but thank, thank you for thank everyone for my for the support. I've never seen eighth graders do what they were doing, East Bay. Um, but this is a great event. I think putting them on this stage is great. And for Brian Hirschman to do this uh, and for him to invite me and Miles out here to judge, is, it's a great event for uh, the, the young men out here. As for the 8th grade games, we got both local squads in the tournament matching up. Lock up, select, and the San Diego Slayers. San Diego Slayers, by the way, owned by Keenan Allen. So I hope they don't become the Costa Mesa Slayers. Just saying. There in the second half is Lock up's Dexter Stratton with two of his team high 15 points. And then for the Slayers, that's Kai Jesse getting a block there. And then the finish is he gets 15 on the day. Now check this out. 6.3 seconds on the clock. Diego Solis of the Slayers. Getting that one from three. That's your game winner. Slayers take this one, 49-47. It's really awesome. It's a blessing to be invited. And the talent is tough, like, as, as good as it can be. Well, I knew we needed to score, and I wanted to hit a three. So if they scored, they wouldn't be ahead if they made a layup. And I, I like taking the big shots. It's the last weekend of Surf Cup, and this session all about the little guys. San Diego Surf taking on Portland in 11 under action. Second half, loose ball ends up on the foot of Adam Dunbar. Gets a score for SD, but they still trail. But they don't trail for long. Final minutes, Aiden Sadat crossing to Adrian Gary, finishing the play right there. SD Surf coming back to tie this one, three all. And in another San Diego group playing the SD Soccer Club, facing ISC out of Issaquah, Washington, first half. Check out, beautiful save by Alex Jolig, one of his seven on the day. Then on the corner, Alejandro Gonzalez gets the perfect angle for the score as SD Soccer Club wins 4-0. How'd you like the day, kids? This is my first international tournament, so I'm not very, I'm not like used to all these different teams. I know everyone's really good, so I'm always prepared for a good match. It feels good playing to a national, playing an international team, because you're showing everybody how you um, like started playing soccer. Let's go to the San Diego Country Club. Top golfers from across the world are gathering for the U.S. Women's Amateur Championship. The official competition beginning on Monday, so the players are taking this weekend to just get familiar with the course. And the 156-player field includes six local products, two of them still in high school. 
I've been working hard to be able to qualify for this event, knowing that it was here for a couple of years now. So it's I'm blessed that I'm actually here right now, and I'm excited for the week. It means a lot to have a hometown big USGA event here, especially at a prestige course like this, just because it's really close, and I'll have a lot of friends and family coming out to watch. I would like it to be a little rowdy, too, especially if I'm, like, down in a match or trying to get back up and they can cheer me on. I think it'd mean a lot if I won. It's um, the neighborhood that I grew up in and it's a golf course that I've always wanted to play at so um, it'll have a very special place in my heart.